Hi, this is Couch Potato Mike, and I'm doing a little something different tonight. I am... I'm making gumbo, yo. Yes, that's right. Welcome to the Couch Potato Kitchen. Now, I'm not just making any gumbo. No, I'm making keto gumbo. Why? Because me and my wife are on a low-carb keto diet, and I have learned how to cook a lot of things low-carb, and low-carb is the way to go. You lose weight, you can't tell by me, but yeah, I'm losing it. I weigh less than I used to, and my wife weighs a lot less than she used to. So here we go, and I'm about to show you what you need to make the low-carb keto gumbo. For my low-carb keto gumbo, you're going to need a half a cup of oil. You can use this, or you can use olive oil. It's a bit more expensive, but once you shoot it, you know where the extra money has went. You're also going to need a half a cup of raw, chopped one of these things. For those laymans out there, that is a yellow onion. Now, you're also going to need one cup of chopped this crap, which is celery. You're also going to need one cup of diced up green these things, bell peppers. Now, after that, you're also going to need 11 ounces, or approximately thereof, of andouille sausage. Then, after that andouille, you're going to need some shrimp. You're going to need this stuff, one pound, which is, um, that's not one pound, that is 12 ounces, which is, uh, that one too. Okay, so it's going to be more than 12. I'm going to use more than a pound. I'm going to try to use a pound, but eh, anyway. Now, let's see. You're going to need some Creole seasoning. You're going to need arrowroot powder. You're going to need a couple of these large bay leaves. And you're going to need six cups of chicken broth. Yes, yum. This is going to be amazing. You're also going to need one of these things. It is a pot. Uh, mine has the burns already on it, but you can use a burn-free one if you choose. Now, the first thing you're actually going to want to do before you start putting stuff in that pot, we've got a bunch of frozen shrimp right here. See? Frozen. That really hurt. We need to thaw that out. So we need to start by thawing that in. Now, here's the thing about this. Most people would say, oh, you want to thaw in cold water or use the microwave or whatever. No. You see, thawing in cold water is great if you're not going to use it immediately. I thaw in hot water. The reason I thaw in hot water, it gets thawed a lot quicker that way. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm filling a large bowl full of shrimp. Now I've decided I'm not going to use all my shrimp. I'm going to use the one whole bag because I need that much. But you're only going... For about a pound of that, so I need about another third of one of these, which I'm just going to put in one of these. You can watch, it's okay. But you really need these things thawed out, because you don't want to start cooking any kind of soup with frozen ingredients. It takes a lot longer, and it screws up your cooking time, and you drop shrimp on the floor while recording a YouTube video. Is that about four ounces? I don't know. Let's add some more in there. Yep, that'll do it. And uh, you can't really see this right now, but my other bag of shrimp is just floating on top of the water for some reason. So let's just turn that off. And see what we got going on down here. Yes. Now we're gonna have the we're gonna let these sit in that water until they thawed. And while we're doing that, let's chop some frickin' vegetables, huh? Okay, first off, I am going to need half a cup of chopped one of these things, okay? So basically, what you want to do is you want to find the end that looks like it has an opening on it, okay? And you want to cut that end right off there. There you go. Now, the easiest way to do it is just cut this some, some, this some piece of onion, I'm trying to stay monetized here, in half. And you want to just pull off this whole outside part. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, that's kind of wasteful, isn't it? Well, you make your own video and don't waste that part then. So, I am going to pull this off. Besides, this is where all the flaky layers are. And that's great if you're making biscuits. Not so great if you're making gumbo. So, get those off there. Okay. And you want to pull off this skin because it's there and it's irritating me. So, 
you want to start by cutting you chopping your onion and this is a little tip that I learned from uh, watching Food Network a lot basically you cut it like that and then you like that and then you like that over here a little bit of that and then you want to go right up the old wazoo there and then you do that and try not to cut your freaking thumb off like I just did and we're gonna stop right there yep I'm not bleeding that's always a good thing and then we're gonna take this because we need a half a cup of this okay so Yeah, this works out to be about a half a cup. Just, so basically, half of a medium-sized onion, or so to speak. Next, we are going to need one cup of chopped celery that has been rinsed because I just dropped it in the sink. Rinse that off for me, thank you. And I want to take that end off there. And take that end off there. Yeah, we're going to need one cup of this. Yeah, thank you. Just set that down. And just... You want to try to make most of your cuts pretty even, unless the damn thing gets in your way, and then you're just going to cut it all willy-nilly. Not Willie Nelson, though. Please don't uh, get a beard shavings or pot smoke anywhere near this. At least not while you're cooking. That'll cause you to put all sorts of weird stuff in there, like milk chocolate and battery acid and beard shav trimmings. And maybe even some bandana sweat. You don't want to do that. So, like I said, friends do not let friends cook gumbo with Willie Nelson, basically. So we're going to just chop this up really good, or so to speak. And I know there's probably professional cooks out there. Yeah, right, like they'd ever watch this channel. Uh, going, what are you doing? Well, I am cutting up a piece of celery. Now, I need one cup of this. And let's see... Have we hit the magic number yet? What do we got here? What do we got here? Do we have a cup? That's pretty close to a cup. I may have overestimated my celery needs. Do we have a cup? No, we do not have a cup. So basically, we're going to cut that off in like so, and that off in like so. <laughs> okay, so. And more chopping. Now, there's many different methods you can use for chopping. I'm using the one that makes me nervous. Okay. And... <laughs> Alright. Do we have a cup yet? Actually, I had a cup right now, and now... Ah, screw it. Okay, yeah, that's a cup. Now, I'm going to need one cup of chopped green bell pepper. Which, basically, you just want to do this. You just want to cut the sides off... Strip it down naked until you can see what it's wearing under its skirt. Just pull down that. Now, you don't want any of these seeds and stuff like that, so we're just going to take that and uh, get rid of the seeds here and a little bit of the membrane. You don't want to go insane with the membrane here. Just cut that off. And you got some more membrane over here, I think. There's also some seeds in there, too. This is what happens when you take cooking lessons from somebody who took cooking lessons from YouTube. And I'm talking about me. No, I never learned how to cook off YouTube. I basically just print uh, recipes off the internet and just completely wing it and watch a lot of uh, Food Network. So basically, I'm going to need to. I'm going to need, I believe, one, I believe I said one cup of this. Yes, one cup of chopped bell pepper, green bell pepper specifically. And I say green specifically because there are red ones, there's yellow ones, there's orange ones. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you get other colors of bell pepper, they're either psychedelic and made by Willie Nelson. But he's getting enough air time in this. This video's about me. I can't even remember the last time I even talked about Willie Nelson, actually. But I always heard that his herb was top shelf, but I never knew till I tried for myself. And now that I've tried it, I can tell you, my friends, I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. That's an old folk song that they used to sing us at church camp each year. Now you just continue chopping these until you've got approximately one cup of these. Smash it flat, it makes a chop easier. 
get that off there. Get back here. Stay in line, fool. All right. And we're still cutting vegetables. Yes. Yes, because this is how Couch Potato Mike does it. This is how I do it. I show you the whole process, the whole mean process. Now, ugh. do we have a cup yet? Do we have a flipping cup yet? Uh, almost. So, is that a cup? Yeah, that's about a cup. All right, so I'll do something with that later. All right. Okie dokie. Now we're moving right on to our soup pot. Like I said, mine has uh, mine has uh, some stains, some burns in the bottom. Uh, if yours has burns in the bottom, then you're right on the same track as I am. So what we're going to do next is we basically need to, you need to take a uh, half of a teaspoon, half of a tablespoon, which is uh, not that one. That one's too small. Not that one. That is a teaspoon. This one is a half of a tablespoon. Yes. And we need to add one half of a tablespoon of oil into this thing. Now, I've already turned it on. Not sure if I should have done that yet, but you can see how the smoke is rising around us. So basically, you just go to take half a tablespoon of that and just put that right in the bottom there. Right in the bottom there. All right. Now, now, now that we've got that in there, give that a little second to warm up here. All right. Doesn't seem like much, does it? But you want to kind of coat the pan because what's going to happen next? is this. See this? This is that bowl of vegetables that we had. The bell peppers and the onions and um, the um, um, the celery, yes. Because this, that's going to go right down in there. Yep. Now we are going to spend a little time sautéing this. Now there is a right instrument for everything. I use the spatula. Why? Because it's right there and it's made of metal and I use it for everything. And you can use a spatula too. And don't ask about the stains in the bottom, they have nothing to do with the spatula. So basically we're just going to stir this around. Now you want to do this until the onions become translucent. And that means, see right now they're pretty opaque. You don't want them to become transparent because then you can't see what you're cooking with. You want them to become translucent. That basically means that they've softened up a little and they're getting slightly see-through. That onion is too big for me. It's irritating me. Get in there. Okay. Oh, throw that right back in there. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, and I, I forgot to say that you might want to wash your hands before starting cooking and chopping stuff and things of that nature. Now, I myself do not do that because I think... All the stuff that I touched that day adds a certain amount of nice flavor and seasoning. You're tasting a little bit of me. My blood, sweat, and tears, sometimes literally, depending on the day I've had. Now we're going to do this. We're still doing this. Because like I said, we're going for translucent for these onions. Translucent. Yes, absolutely translucent. These are not translucent yet. Now I have still have my shrimp over there, thawing out, and you know what, while that's happening, what we're going to do, whoa, look at that, special effects, wow, it's coming straight at you. Now, because the next thing we're going to have to do is add our shrimp and our andouille sausage. Next, we've got our andouille sausage. Now, andouille sausage is a special spicy Cajun sausage. It's not like, you know, breakfast sausage or anything like that. This is like something that they eat down on the bayou, I guarantee. And I just lost every viewer I have from Louisiana. Now, the thing about this, you want to cut it, but you want to cut it at an angle. Yeah, you want to... It's style is what it is. It's presentation. I mean, you could just cut it flat, but where's the fun in that? No, you're wanting to cut this down at an angle, and you're wanting to get these nice little shapes like this. Little parallelograms. When you turn it sideways, you want your sausage to kind of look like Tennessee on a map. So, you didn't bet you didn't know that, that uh, Tennessee is an imperfect parallelogram. Basically, a parallelogram is where you got a shape with four sides, and they are parallel to each other, but they're not perpendicular at the corners. No, they come in at a slant. Now, Tennessee is an imperfect parallelogram, actually, because its ends are not completely, you know parallel to each other. 
parallela. That's what that means. It means you're only as parallel as Ella is, and she is one crooked chick, let me tell you. Met her one time in a bar down in Louisiana. That's where I learned about and Dewey Sausage to begin with. And she was playing a piano on her knees with an accordion strapped to her back and a parrot sitting on her shoulder saying, See, please, somebody get this crazy lady off me. And yes, at this point, I'm not sure what I'm doing anymore. I'm just trying to cut andouille sausage at completely imperfect angles because the thing keeps rolling on me. You see me rolling my sausage and gonna put it in the gumbo. Yes, put it in the gumbo. Where, there it is. Yes, as you can see now, that my onions have become slightly translucent. So we're going to turn the heat down a little bit there, you know, because I don't want to smoke this out. Now it is time to add my sausage and my shrimp. So please go ahead and, yeah, you just watch that over there for a minute. I was talking to the YouTube family. There you go. Don't be so ginger about it. Okay, out of my way. All right, we got a big bowl of shrimp and sausage here, which are the two key ingredients in any freaking gumbo. All right, now we got those going in here. Now we're gonna stir this around and cook it for about another two minutes, okay? okay you just wanna get that good and cooked. Stir this all, keep it, you want to keep it stirring constantly because you're getting all these flavors infused in there. You have to keep it stirring because you don't want stuff to stick to the side of the pan because it's not quite time to add the other ingredients, but soon. Okay, we have been stirring this for about two minutes, give or take. Now it is time to add the next of our ingredients into this masterpiece called keto gumbo. So the next thing we're going to do is stir in our arrowroot powder measuring spoons because I need I need something. I need what do I need? Two I need tables, two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. And that is not that one. That is that one. It's this one. Ha ha ha. Thought you could get me. <laughs> this is your arrowroot powder. It's kind of a thickener, okay? It helps to thicken this a little bit. All right, now we're going to stir that right in. And along with the arrowroot powder, we're then going to add two bay leaves. These are bay leaves. Yes, I'm just sticking leaves into this dang thing. We're going to add a little bit of something about the flavor in there. I'm hoping they break down. I've never stuck a whole leaf like that into a, into a pot before. There's the special effects again. All right, now coming right up after... We do our lip bay leaves is the chicken broth. Now we need six cups of chicken broth. Now one of these containers I've noticed is four cups of chicken broth. So I had to buy two of them because I'm using one and a half of these containers. And if anybody passed math, please tell me if I'm right about that. All right, so that's one. Anybody else got to go to the bathroom? Okay, here, take this. And here is half the other container. Pours a lot smoother out of the measuring cup. There you go. Now we're going to keep stirring this. Just keep stirring. Just keep stirring, stirring, stirring. And then we add the remainder of our oil. And it gets all bubbly in there. And then we add our Creole seasoning. Now we're going to need one big honking teaspoon of the Creole seasoning. So basically, it's one of these things. Right there. All right, thank you. Take these. And we are going to stir all this stuff. Now, once everything is mixed in there, we are going to put this right here. And then we are going to get out of my way. We are going to bring this all the way up. Why? Because we are bringing this to a boil. All right, let's see what we've got going on here. Yes, that has come to a boil now. You can tell by the foam. So what we're going to do is we're going to now turn this down to a simmer, okay? Yes, we're just going to let that simmer. 
is you'll notice the bay leaves are floating right on top, which is very, very convenient. Look at those special effects. Now we're just going to let this simmer for about, I got a timer up there, so you get to see all the magic. Cook for 10 to 15 minutes. So let's just set it and forget it. Now, it's been about 10 minutes, and this pot has reduced a bit, all right? You want it to thicken up some, and I don't think this is going to be quite thick enough, to be honest with you. Now, it's not going to be very thick, but we're actually going to let this go for about another five minutes. So, we'll be back. Okay, it's been about 14, 15 minutes, something like that, and this is thickened up nicely. Now, you're not wanting to get porridge thick. That's just not going to happen. You'd have to let it reduce all night. And frankly, at that point, you'd have even more stains on the bottom of your pan. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out these little bay leaves here. Because you don't want to eat those. I mean, you could leave them in and like, hey, you got the bowl with the bay leaf in it. Yeah, you got a prize going on there. You got, you got a piece of yard trimmings in the pot. Oh, my God. All right, so we're just going to give those to the animals. All right. Now, we turn the heat off, because believe it or not, you want this to cool. So we're just going to take that right off the heat there, and not there. And we're actually going to let this cool, because that is the thing. You don't want to serve gumbo piping hot for some reason. Don't ask me why. I'm not Cajun! All right, it is time to plate. Now, this is a special little treat that I've put together for my wife, because, like I said earlier, we are on a special ketogenic low-carb diet and if you don't know what ketogenic means google it because I'm not here to teach you everything in life so we're just gonna ladle her some of this up yeah that looks nice that looks really nice now, I know this is like a mixing bowl that I'm serving this to her in not a soup bowl but you know what when you uh, when you work on a budget you deal with what life gives you so I'm just gonna give her one more Big spoonful of that. Big meaty spoonful, okay? And there we go. There you go, Nessie. Guard the lock. Here we go. Back in there. That was awesome, honey. Yes, this is my lovely wife making a not-so-lovely face. And this is me serving her her low-carb keto gumbo. It's still hot. Do you see the steam? It <laughs> smells good. I just saw an orb fall down. Number 15. <laughs> no, that's the foot <laughs> No, not in my gumbo. You can't get copyrighted. Hot, but really, oh, spicy good. Hold on, let me, let me take a bite when it's really not so hot. Real life, y'all. Mm. 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 This room is full of orbs. It's becoming a whole different kind of video altogether now. It's a ghost story. See, the dog's even going crazy. It's amazing. There's shrimp. It's so yummy. I mean, really good. So, would you say that this gumbo is a success? Yes, it's a success. That is awesome. Really good. Kiss the cook. <laughs> I'm already planning it. <laughs> so, that is low carb keto gumbo. My first ever cooking video. So, for the Couch Potato Mike YouTube channel, this is Couch Potato Mike saying happy cooking and gumbo, my friends. Hit the stop button.